sure that everybody is aware of and knows everybody that's up here. Um, I'm far right, Deputy Steve Conway, under Sheriff uh, Jason Johnson, Captain Tony Rio, and then Detective Glenville Keedy, uh, all with the Sheriff's Office. Wanted to get together today and just talk about an incident uh, that happened um, around 3.30 uh, last night. Our deputies responded to an armed robbery an armed robbery at the Dino's Casino located at 5318 West Harrier Drive. Two male suspect, suspects, heavily armed, both wearing masks, into the casino demanding money and other items. The suspects then left the casino and carjacked an SUV, charcoal in color, belonging to a family from Washington. And at gunpoint, they took the family hostage with them in the vehicle. This family included a mother, a father, two young children, uh, and their grandmother. Within a couple minutes, deputies and officers were able to locate the vehicle traveling eastbound on Interstate 90 near Grand Creek Road. They attempted to pull the vehicle over, and a vehicle pursuit began and ensued through the city of Missoula. Initially, the adult female hostage was the driver of the vehicle, and as a result of the pursuit, the speeds were slower or moderate. A deputy was able to begin negotiations uh, with the suspect uh, through 911 and the male husband's uh, cell phone. The suspect immediately demanded that law enforcement back off and stay back for several blocks or they threatened that they would shoot someone inside of the vehicle. So the deputies and the officers backed off but continued to follow the vehicle from a safe distance. The deputy was able to convince the suspect to first release a 12-year-old boy uh, by Taco Bell on Reserve Street, and later to release a 14-year-old female along with her grandmother at the intersection of Russell uh, and West Broadway. At that point, one of the suspects uh, began driving the vehicle. The suspects refused to release the mother and the father. With the suspect driving the vehicle, the pursuit then headed southbound on Brooks uh, at a very high rate of speed. And near the intersection of Door Lane, the male driver uh, turned around and then fired multiple shots from the vehicle at pursuing deputies and officers. Because of the high rates of speed and erratic driving, uh, law enforcement lost sight of the vehicle in the downtown uh, Missoula area. So deputies and officers immediately began searching surrounding areas and notifying neighboring counties. At approximately 0521 hours, dispatch con was contacted by the two remaining family members. They reported that they had been released by the suspects who fled on foot near Sweetgrass Lane and Highway 93 North. Deputies, officers, troopers, and our canine unit searched the area, but we were unable to locate the suspects, who we believe were ultimately picked up at some point by an accomplice. Before I take some questions, let me just first say that we're very thankful that this family is safe, unharmed, and, and that they're eaten reunited and together. Right now we're working very hard to apprehend uh, these suspects. Our detectives are in the process of sorting through all of the information, pulling up on leads and attempt to determine their location. We're providing the descriptions of the suspects and we're asking for the community's help in locating them. The suspects are considered armed and extremely dangerous. I have the following descriptions at this time for suspects. Suspect number one, is an African American male, five foot eight, 140 to 165 pounds. He's well spoken. He was wearing dark pants, black sweatshirt, sunglasses, a black bandana, with a black hat or a hoodie. He's armed with two handguns. Suspect number two is a light skinned white male, five six to five seven, 140 to 165 pounds. Blue eyes black pants, black sweatshirt, black bandana with a white design, and, and he's armed with a handgun. If anybody has any information about this incident or the location of these suspects, please call 911 right away, and I'd be happy to answer some questions for the ticket. Phil, I think you believe that they were eventually picked up by a cop. From interviewing the witnesses uh, who were present in the vehicle, uh, on the way up to the Highway 93 North in the Sweetgrass area, uh, there were 
were some communications and phone calls that were made by the suspects uh, to a range of pickup. Um, in addition to that, uh, our canine unit uh, was able to um, track where the suspects were dropped off and fled on foot back to an area to the highway. So we believe that at some point they were picked up. Um, we're very sure that they were making arrangements to have that done while traveling up to that area. There are some, oh, uh, there are some discrepancies from your news outlets about how specifically the family uh, in the car was hijacked. Uh, do we know a location of where this happened, and was the family in their car, forced into their car, um, or already inside the vehicle? Do you know a little bit more about how this hijacking happened? We do. So the family's from Washington, and they stopped at the Dino's gas station um, to get gas uh, when the robbery was occurring. Um, as they left, they contacted 911 and reported the robbery, and they were asked to stop, pull over near the interchange, and wait for officers to respond. The suspects uh, initially had taken another vehicle, a Pontiac Sunfire vehicle, and had driven uh, to the area of the uh, interchange, and then they vacated that vehicle and uh, at gunpoint uh, encountered the, the family and acquired that vehicle. Do you know where that Pontiac first vehicle came from? That vehicle uh, was parked uh, in the lot at Dino's, uh, belonged to a roommate, a uh, friend of a co-worker that he was picking up, and they had obtained the keys while they were inside the store committing the robbery. So if law enforcement had not asked to pull over and wait, Well, it may have happened to someone else. Either. These suspects were uh, very determined to uh, get a getaway vehicle or swap out a getaway vehicle. Um, but unfortunately, this family uh, had uh, did what they were asked to do to uh, stop and wait for uh, law enforcement. How are they doing right now? The family's doing well. I've had a chance to visit with them. Their spirits are good. They're just so thankful that they're unharmed, uh, that they're all together. It was rough on them to uh, let their children out and have their children give them kisses goodbye, not know if they were going to see them again. Um, but ultimately, they're reunited. They're back here. Uh, they're safe. They're in good spirits, and uh, we're doing what we can for them. And they're they're working very well with our detectives to give us a lot of information about this crime. Uh, if you don't mind, just just to clarify that, or um, it is, I've only spoken with the mother. Her statement was they believed that our suspects actually drove off in a, in a separate vehicle. That's why they chose that specific place. They believed that the suspects drove past them. And so at that time, they believed that they were safe because they believed that the suspects had already driven by. It was only until a few minutes later that their doors were pulled open and there were two men there with uh, pointing guns. So that, that is a little bit, you know, just to clarify that. Okay. And you guys um, searched a bunch of the houses and did a, a ramen check. Can you just kind of take us through that process? We did. So we were able to um, have one of the victims uh, take us to the location where the suspects fled on foot. Uh, our canine began a track at that location. Uh, we had great assistance from the city police department and from the highway patrol. Uh, both tactical teams for the sheriff's office and the police departments uh, were uh, paged out, and then we were able to do a search of the area uh, that began with the track uh, that later uh, began with the door-to-door -door search uh, with those uh, tactical team members. Um, in addition, we utilized reverse 911 for that area to get the word out to people that um, there was danger in the area, that these suspects uh, were on foot in the area, and to to make them aware of that danger, but also to make sure vehicles and homes and stuff like that was locked up. Did you get any information from those residents? Were they helpful in providing information? We did not uh, get much information uh, from the residents that we spoke to on the door-to-door -door checks, which uh, is another factor that leads us to believe that uh, they were shortly thereafter picked up. Do you know what direction they were headed in? There is, and uh, Detective Glenville PD, uh, that is why he's standing here to, <laughs> to talk about some of the work he's done already.
already with some of the other agencies. We are in the process of checking with other agencies, trying to you know, see if there's any commonality between elements of the descriptions of the suspect. Um, did there anything they said, anything they did, anything that would, would, would indicate that these are the same suspects? There are some similarities. At this point, we don't have enough to say that it's definitely related. That is definitely something we are looking into. That was the first thing that popped into our mind. The, when the suspect entered the, 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 the business, the convenience store, they attempted to disable the, the surveillance system. We're in the process of working with that right now. Will those be released to the public today? I can't answer that question because we don't, want, don't know what we will have access to. So. Uh, just because this is expected, how dangerous are these suspects? Well, these suspects fired at officers. Uh, that makes them extremely dangerous. Uh, to not only officers but the public, uh, we know that they're armed and they are um, very dangerous uh, to our community. That's why uh, part of this press conference is just reaching out uh, to the media, asking the media to get the word out, getting the community's help to report anything suspicious. Uh, if anybody knows anything about the location of these two suspects, to call 911 immediately and uh, let us know. One thing I'll add is if we like to have them call 911 if they have information because we want it to be very timely. If anybody has information and they want to remain anonymous, and say they know these suspects, they can utilize our, our Crime Stoppers phone number. That's 728-4444. Uh, Where in Washington is this family from? Lake Stevens. Lake Stevens, Washington. Yes. Will there be an opportunity when all this is settled? as the suspects are safely in custody. So there will be an opportunity for us to be able to interview the family if they're, if they're willing. Oh, sorry, I just, I just don't understand. Sure. Yeah. Right. Not at this point, but if that changes, we'll, right. we'll let them be right now. What's going to happen now? What are kind of the next steps? Uh, in light of all these casino robberies, is there going to be more surveillance on casinos in the area now? What are we looking at moving forward? Well, our investigators are working tirelessly right now. Um, sheriff's office investigators as well as police investigators um, to try to determine and locate these individuals. They do have some leads that they're following up, and as information becomes available, we'll notify uh, local media. Uh, we're definitely going to have additional uh, people out, uh, additional patrols, um, and we have uh, quite a few resources right now dedicated to locating these uh, individuals sooner rather than later.